Chapter 4, Vocatives. In this chapter, we would accomplish the following objectives. Number one, to memorize the four irregular vocative endings indicated by the sentence O mi fili marke. Objective 1a, to correctly address males whose names end in us or us. Objective 2a, to know the defining vowel and therefore stem of each of the five conjugations. Objective 2b, to give commands with long a, long e, or long i verbs, a, a, e verbs. Objective 2c, to give commands with short i verbs and nothing verbs. In other words, all the short verbs, which are a little different. Objective 3, to use vocatives and imperatives. Vocatives and imperatives are pretty much the same thing. It's just one is a noun and the other is a verb. And objective four, to learn compounds of the irregular verb to be. As for assessment, you will know this material if you can do the exercises. And this stuff will slightly help you on some of the more esoteric Latin sentences. In this chapter, we need to reveal several areas on our grammar charts. Go to your grammar charts, which are in the link down below this video, and set the slider at the top to chapter four. That will reveal the vocative case down here in chart number four. It will also reveal the nominative plural lines of charts 11a, 11b, and 11d. And then the, it will reveal the whole left side of chart 12 with the numbers 1 to 10. And then the first line in chart 13 and 16, which are both imperatives. First off, our first objective, to memorize the four irregular vocative endings in the sentence, O mi fili market. This is a sentence that a father might say to his son. Now we might expect that it would be this above, O meus filius Marcus, O my son Marcus, with an exclamation point at, at the end. But that's actually not what you say when you directly address someone and use these words. Each of these words has a special vocative form. Meus is instead me. It's very simple. Next, we're going to find that any word ending in I-U-S, which is mainly male names or second declension nouns, like Phileus, and they're mostly people nouns, like Aquarius, the water carrier, or Vicarius, the vicar, so these could have a vocative because most of them are people that you could talk to and address. But in general, anytime you use a vocative of some noun ending I-U-S, instead of saying I-U-S, you simply say the, a long I, feely. So instead of O oh, Marius, you would say O oh, Mari. And instead of O oh, Julius, you would say O oh, Yuli. And then last off, we have another change. Instead of saying us when you directly address Marcus, you instead say a shorty, Marque. Obviously, these rules will mostly occur addressing men. If you, you address women, it's not like their names even have a vocative case. You just use the nominative. A. It is only in second declension singular even masculine words, that there is a difference between the vocative and the nominative. So the vocative case is really small on the grammar chart. All right, so if you just remember this one little sentence, you'll know all the irregular vocatives in Latin. This is like a key sentence, so try to remember that sentence right there. All right, so why don't you try some practice with that? Objective one, vocatives. Put these names into the vocative case. Remember, omi fili marke, and the fili word tells you this second rule, that anything ending i-u-s should become i when you're directly talking to it. And this fourth word, marke, gives you the first rule, that anything ending u-s becomes e when you're directly talking to it. So, I'll do the first one for you. I look at number one here, and I look at the ending and realize, oh, it's a feminine name, it's a first declension word, it's not any of these. 
So vocative should be the normal nominative form of it, just Aurelia. So number one I've done for you. Why don't you try the others? There's seven of them. Stop the video, and then I'll put up the answers in a split second. So, puer does not end U-S or I-U-S, so you just keep it like it is. Number three, o aulus becomes o aula, And if you want to know why, it's because U-S becomes E when you're using the vocative case, when you're directly addressing it. Number four, o plautius becomes o plauti, because I-U-S equals I. Number five, O oh, men. Now here we have a plural word. Our special rule only applies to singulars. So the plural stays just the way it is in the nominative. So really it's only when you're talking to one male, not multiple males, that you have to worry about these two irregular endings. Rule six. O oh, King Tarquinius. Well here Rex stays the same. But Tarquinius ends I-U-S, so it becomes Tarquini. Number seven was an easy one. Us becomes E. Eh. And number eight was an easy one. Us becomes E. Eh. All right, so hopefully we've accomplished objectives number one and 1A. Now we're going to move on to verbs. Chart number 13. And 15B. So 15B there and chart number 13 up here. I'm going to reproduce this chart and I'm going to remove these far right columns and the coverings. And it's going to look like this. All right, here's your first real treatment of verbs in Latin. As you can see, there are what's called five conjugations. A conjugation is kind of the same thing as a declension but conjugations refer to verbs, whereas declensions only refer to nouns. Okay, so there are five conjugations. First conjugation has these forms and those command forms. Second conjugation has these forms and those command forms, and so on. If you look at my color codings here, red, blue, black, yellow, brown, you'll notice that each conjugation has a particular characteristic vowel at the end, right before the personal ending, the thing that changes. And that particular vowel is the sign of that conjugation. In the first conjugation, it is a long A. Now you might point out to me, oh, Mr. Rudman, um, in the he, she, it form, it's a short A, and also in the they form. Yes, that's an exception to the rule. Before T and NT, long vowels always become short. So I'm sorry that those don't follow the pattern, but I guess you'll just have to take my word for it that long A is the sign of, of the whole first conjugation. The whole second conjugation sign is long E. The third conjugation has two parts. There's what's called third conjugation and then third I-O conjugation. Haha. <laughs> and these are very similar. In fact, they only differ in the first and last forms, in the first person singular and third person plural, for now. Now later on, when we get into other tenses, they will differ much more. But for now, the only difference is this little I here. And down low in the third person plural. However, these two really are quite different conjugations. First off, the one on the left here in black um, is called a nothing conjugation. Really, it has no vowel as its sign. Cado. Originally, it would have been cads, cadst, cadmus, cadtis, and cadunt. However, that doesn't sound good. So over time, this third conjugation slowly got the smallest, most unassuming vowel possible, namely an I slipping into four of the forms, and then a U slipping into the last form. So nowadays it looks like this. 
caro caras carimus caratis carunt. By the way, this goes first person, second person, third person, and then in the plurals, first person, second person, third person. Therefore, the only time where the nothing character appears is in the first person singular. Well, you could also say that the character is still visible in the third person plural where there's just a you, not an I you. But as we will learn in other tenses, having no real vowel really is characteristic of this third conjugation column. Really, the I below is what we call just a connector vowel. So long A is the characteristic vowel of the first conjugation. Long E is the first characteristic vowel of the second conjugation. No vowel is the characteristic of the third. Short I is the characteristic vowel of the third I-O conjugation. And then long I is the characteristic vowel of the fourth conjugation. So notice that third and fourth appear very similar, but the one on the left has short eyes, i, and the one on the right has long eyes, e, except of course before t and nt, where it shortens. Okay. Okay, so this vowel is going to tell us quite a few things. First off, it's going to tell us what the stem is. The stem is the part that stays the same. Notice when he never changes, except for the long mark over top of it, which sometimes disappears. By and large, it never changes. Copy never changes, and so on if you go across this whole chart. The only thing which changes is the ending. So from now on, you should always think of verbs in two parts, the stem in brown here, and then the personal ending, which tells what person is doing the verb whether it be I, you, he, she, it, we, y'all, they. Okay, so now I've therefore highlighted the stem of all of these. And notice, of course, that the stem ends in the characteristic vowel of that conjugation. Long A, or long E, or nothing, or short I, or long I. Now this is going to be good for us in this chapter where we learn about command forms, because... For one, two, three of the five conjugations, you can just remember that the stem is the command form. Nata, swim, habe, exclamation point, have, when me, come. And then if we want to make it plural, we just add a te onto the end of it. Natate, swim, y'all. Habete, have y'all, when nite, come on y'all. <laughs> so for th three of these, first, second, and fourth, stem equals command form. Instead of command form, I think I'll just say imperative, because that's the technical term. The imperative is the command form. Hopefully you know that, because you remember the verb imperat imperare means to command. So the Im in English, the imperative is the command form. Then, third conjugation is a little more tricky. For now, all you have to remember is that all the third conjugation words have a artificial E, short E, as their command form. Kare, kape, kare, fall, kape, take. And then in the plurals, that short E gets slurred into a short I, and then you add on your regular T-E. Ite. Kadete. Fall down, y'all. And in plural, kapete. Take it, y'all. <laughs> the way it goes. Okay, and I let you see the negative command forms, although we are not going to touch those in this chapter, so you don't need to worry about them unless you want to be an overachiever. Same with the passives. They're up here, but we're not going to use them at all. You don't need to worry about them. So don't worry about those. So hopefully you now know how to make command forms. What you have to do is first know what conjugation a verb is, and then if it's one of the three conjugations that has a long vowel as its stem, you just emphasize that long vowel until you turn blue in the face. 
It's just like saying when he must, but you just stop before you get to the must. And then if it's one of the short conjugations, either the one with no characteristic vowel or the one with a characteristic short I, then you kind of stop it after the last consonant, cop. Why do I say that? Because when you say cop, over time, just emphasizing the P sound, cop, makes it become cop, cop, and that's where that short E comes from. It's just an aspiration, a plosive burst of air on really on the end of the P sound. Same over here. It's re if you just say cod all the time, it's really cod, cod, cod. So that E just kind of slips in. So you basically just stop the sound after the consonant and then let it aspirate or blow air to get an extra E sound. So you just have to know where to stop the verb to give a command form. You stop it at the vowel, or if it has no vowel or a short vowel, you just let an E get in there. Kape. Alrighty, so hopefully you can do these command forms. Let's practice some. Here you have modifications of the exercises you just did. It says, on the line, identify the verb's conjugation. So you have to think to yourself, oh, which column was it in? Was it in that column, or was it in this column, or that one? And so you'll write on this line, on the little line, second, because I, I know that Weed it is short for weed it, we dare in my vocab list, we dare. And right there, that long E is the sign of the conjugation. Yeah, that's kind of something I need to heavily emphasize. When you see the verb in your vocab list, and this is why you've been memorizing the whole thing up till now, that second one after the dash tells you what characteristic vowel it is and therefore what conjugation it is. So this one, we day, is a second conjugation. As for, let's see, salutat in your vocab list, it's going to look like salutat salutare with a long A there. And so I would know that that would be first conjugation because the characteristic of the first conjugation is long A. All right, so I used my command form of Aurelia, also called the vocative, and I used my command form of the verb C, also called, hopefully you now know, the imperative. Notice, a plural subject needs a plural verb. Here we only had a singular subject, so we only needed a singular verb, but be careful. I think number two and maybe a couple others have a plural subject. All right, so why don't you try those and stop the video, and in a second I'll put up the answers. Here are the answers. Weedet is second conjugation. Weedet weedere. And so it's Aurelia is not one man, it's one woman, so we just leave it as is. And use the sign of the second conjugation, weede. Puery was not one male, it's lots of males, so we just leave it as is. Takent appears in your vocab list as taket takere, so, so I know that therefore it's second conjugation, and so I make it taket takete. Now why did I put this extra T in? Well, it was a plural subject, so we need to use the plural command form, te not just the singular command form. So a te will always slip in. Next up, Phileas Maeus when it. I look on my vocab list and I see that it goes when it, when near it. And notice that's a long I, not a short I. And so I know that that is fourth conjugation. Maeus becomes me, because that was your special rule. Phileus becomes Phili, because that's your special rule. No, me Phili Marke. And then Waney, being fourth conjugation, is stopped after the characteristic vowel. Number four, Plautius greets the mistress. Oh, Plauti, 
the mistress greet. You could probably figure all that out for yourself. Nothing was unusual there. Um, number five, audiunt. Well, it appears in your list as audit audire. So that's going to be obviously fourth conjugation. And the vowel is an I, but since we have a plural, we need to put a te on the end of it. Oh, man, listen to me. Number six, discate it. Now, discate it appears in your vocab list as discate it, discatera. And if you looked at that, you'd say to yourself, uh-oh, there's no long A, no long E, and no long I. So it can't be first, second, or fourth conjugation. Therefore, it has to be one of the third conjugations. The, this is going to be the weird one, where you have to stop the sound after the consonant and just kind of aspirate that last con consonant with a short E. O King Tarquinius, depart. O Rex Tarquini, discade. Number seven, dot dare. Dot is a weird word. You would think this would be a long A, but there's a strange exception in first conjugation words, and that is that first conjugation words of one syllable, strangely, do not get long marks. So, I'm sorry, it's an exception to the rule. There's only like four words in all of Latin that are first conjugation and only one syllable. So, sorry. But you'll still use the long mark there on the imperative form. Oh, Valentina, numum da. Oh, Valentinus, give a coin. And lastly, number eight. We look at ponent. Find it in our vocab list. It is ponent, ponere. And that's not a long vowel, so it can't be any of the three long vowel conjugations. It's got to be one of the short vowel third conjugations. And since we have plural, we've got to put in a plural ending. So, I-T. Oh, sons, put the table here. So hopefully you have accomplished objective number three to use both vocatives and imperatives in the same sentence. Ask your teacher if you'd like more practice on that. They can, he, can pro he or she can probably give you more. Now we're going to go on to objective four to learn compounds of the irregular verb to be. And this is going to be really easy, real fast. The word be, to exist, is irregular in Latin. It's not one of the five conjugations you just learned. It's not first, second, third, third I.O. or fourth. It's its own special thing. It's, we say it's irregular. Singular, it's est, and plural, it's sunt. These directly translate as is and are. However, we can make certain compounds of these by adding on the prefixes odd for presence or ab for absence before it. Let's give some examples. Est would equal he, she, or it is. Sunt would equal they are. But if we put odd before any one of those, like that, then it means he, she, or it is present. And they are present. Same thing, if we put ab, then it becomes absent. So why don't you attempt these three below? We'll stop the video for a second, and then I'll put up the answers. Here are the answers. Notice that instead of saying are absent as we would in English, I say it absent are in the order that the Latin says it. If you train yourself to think in this way, in the syntactical order of the Latin, rather than the syntactical order of the English, you will make your things much easier for yourselves, and you will make a major step towards being able to someday speak in Latin if you wish to achieve that objective. So, ad est, ab est, ad sunt, ab sunt. All right, so let's go back and see if we have accomplished our objectives. Number one, to memorize the four irregular vocative endings. O mi fili marca, O my son Marcus. You just remember that, you'll know them all. Two of them refer to males' names, or really second declension names, which are almost all male. In fact, I don't know one that isn't male. Us becomes eh, yus becomes e. Objective 2a, 
to know the defining vowel of each of the five conjugations. Hopefully you can know this by heart by now, and if not soon, they are a, a, nothing, i, and e. Or in other words, long a, long e, nothing, short i, and long i. Objective 2b, to give commands in the three conjugations that have long vowels as their characteristic sign, well, you just end the verb when you get to that long vowel. Woka, take, audi. Objective 2c, to give commands with short i verbs and nothing verbs. By the way, nothing means just verbs that have no characteristic vowel. Well, with these, you just emphasize the last consonant, and you kind of overemphasize it by adding on a short e. And then for the plurals, an i to slip in. Objective three, to use vocatives and imperatives in the same sentence. You just have to get good at that by practicing it. You might, might want to practice with the, some friends, walking around using vocative words, addressing their names, and, and imperative words, telling them to do stuff. And objective four, to learn compounds of the regular verbs to be. So that's oddest, abest, adsunt, and absunt. All right, hopefully you are ready to take on chapter four.